Some people refer to narcissists and other manipulators as energy vampires. That's because they steal your energy. They harvest your energy. Emotion is one of those forms of energy because emotion is energy in motion. It's important to be aware of this tactic so that you can set the proper boundaries and protect your energy. Narcissists and other manipulators survive on narcissistic supply. Now, that supply could be many different things. It could be tangible things, intangible things. So tangible things would be your resources, for example. It could also be S-E-X, or it could be your emotions. They might most want to harvest your emotions. Every one of them is an addict for this form of supply. They need it to survive. If you haven't seen a video that I did a couple years ago on this topic, I'm gonna to put that link up in the corner for you above. So why are they addicts of this energy, of this narcissistic supply? I think it's because somehow they don't know how to connect to the infinite energy in the universe. So what they do is they home in on someone who has what they want and they drain that person of whatever resources, whether tangible or intangible, that they want and need. Now, positive or negative emotional energy will do just fine. Sometimes they're most trying to extract the positive energy from you, your admiration, your praise, your love, your dedication. And other times they're trying to harvest your negative energy, like fear, panic, outrage. H.G. Tudor, who is a self-proclaimed narcissistic sociopath, says that the negative energy, the negative narcissistic supply is the most valuable form of supply for them. So sometimes you might think that if you yell back or you do something back to that person that somehow you're gonna one-up them or somehow you're gonna put them in their place or get revenge or get justice in some kind of way, but often what you end up doing unintentionally in the process is feeding them because they love that. They love that negative energy. They love knowing that they are so important to you that they just provoke you in some kind of way and you give them exactly what they want. This is their trick. This is how they harvest your energy. So their famous tactic to harvest your energy is to provoke your reaction. This is why I teach responding instead of reacting. If you haven't seen those videos or heard the podcast episode that I did on that, I'm gonna link the playlist up here in the corner. You can also find that on the main page of my channel if you scroll down to the playlist. Every manipulator uses the famous equation of problem, reaction, solution. They will either create a problem or take advantage of a problem or crisis that is just naturally happening and they'll somehow manipulate that in order to provoke your reaction. And so when you react without reflecting, without responding from a mindful place, without evaluating the consequences of your reaction and your actions, then you fall right into their trap. And that's when they provide the solution for you. That solution is never to your benefit. That solution is always whatever goal they had all along. They're just navigating that conversation or that experience to get you toward that solution. The most sophisticated ones will get you to beg for that solution. They won't even have to force it on you. The really sophisticated ones will get into your head and make you believe that you need and want that solution that they wanted to provide all along. So why do they do this? Because if they can get power and control over your emotions, then they gain power and control over your behavior. Most people act based on emotions. So the first there's an emotional impulse and if we react instantly without reflecting on how we want to respond in a more mindful way, we can fall right into this trap. Another way they can harvest your energy, which I mentioned in a recent video, is histrionic storytelling. 
This is when they tell a story and it's always the same story with the same phrases, the same dramatic pauses waiting for your reaction. And what they're doing is plucking on your heartstrings. And so if they can pluck on your heartstrings, they're hoping to elicit an emotional reaction from you and therefore some sort of reaction that feeds them this energy that they're trying to harvest. So it's a really good question when you notice that this manipulative person is telling another story while they're talking and droning on and on. And you've probably heard that story already before. Ask yourself internally as they're talking, why are they telling me this story? What's their goal? What are they trying to get? Now, when you can take that observer view, you become the witness of that dynamic. You're no longer in the dynamic. You're no longer annoyed or frustrated or grossed out or whatever's going on because of the story that you're, they're telling you. And you're not feeding them with that supply of, oh, right? Which is often what they're looking for. When you can step back and you can ask and reflect yourself, why are they telling me this? What is it that they want? Now, this is all inside of you. You're not mentioning this to them. You can usually get an idea of exactly how they're trying to manipulate you. You know, they want your pity. That's why they're telling you this pity ploy story about how they're this victim and they're always the victim and nobody helps them or they just do so much and nobody appreciates them or how they're such a good person and they're always doing this and that and the other for other people. Why are they telling you that story? You will find a lot of energy harvesting going on in spiritual and religious groups and in things like synchronized global meditations. These kinds of spiritual psychopaths or religious psychopaths flourish in those kinds of environments because there are naive, vulnerable seekers. There are people who are looking for something. There are people who are looking to be recognized. There are people who are looking to be a part of something. There are people who are desperately looking for love. They know this. That's why they integrate themselves in these kinds of groups. So be very careful in any kind of spiritual or religious group like that or participating in some kind of global meditation because these kinds of psychopaths, when they're really good, they can hone in on those situations and drain all that energy. They can suck that energy out of you and all the other unsuspecting people that are participating. I really don't recommend participating in that kind of stuff unless you absolutely know the people that you're involved with. It's a small group. You trust these people. It's not pumped out on social media so that any spiritual psychopath who sees that is like, great, that's an opportunity to get a lot of energy from people. So be very cautious in those environments. You know, and also I think a big misconception is that if a person has some kind of gift, like maybe they really know the lingo, they know all the dogma of whatever spiritual group that is, whether it's new age or martial arts or some kind of religion, they will learn the dogma, they will learn the practice, they will learn the words to use. They might even have actual abilities, they might even have psychic abilities, they might even have this crazy way of knowing what you're feeling or of remote viewing you. And I think often people confuse psychic abilities with spiritual maturity, spiritual responsibility. Those are not always the same thing. You can have plenty of narcissists and psychopaths in those kinds of environments who are just using that stuff as a platform to harvest the energy of the unsuspecting people who simply approach that from a place of seeking something or looking for some kind of healing or looking for some kind of belonging. Another way that they will harvest energy and emotions is through movements. You might notice this on a smaller scale in like a small, let's say a group of friends, a small social group or a small organization, or you can see this in big societal movements, especially anytime anything gets that big, it almost always gets hijacked by these sorts of people and they start to manipulate the movement. They might take something that was innocent and beautiful 
and then manipulate that with certain language that supports a certain narrative that supports a certain agenda and usually what that is is divide and conquer so usually the language that's provided to these sorts of movements supports some kind of narrative that's meant to divide and conquer people to either keep people in competition or in hating each other or in very clear this side has these narratives and talking points and this side has the other and if you're on the other team you're just wrong you're just evil you're just everything that's wrong with the world and so what have they accomplished here is they have divided you it's the same thing that happens in a narcissistic family they'll divide the siblings they'll divide the extended family members in order to always keep sowing discord they can sow that kind of division and polarity. They end up using the people as pawns for their agenda. They get the people to abuse the people. They get the people to do it to the others and they get to hide in the shadows. You never even see their names. Their names don't appear on anything in those movements. And sometimes you'll see an organization which is the front for those people. But if you investigate who's behind that, it's really hard to figure out who because they're hiding in the dark. So if you get involved with any kind of movements or things like that, it is a really good idea to find out who's behind it. You know, what, what do they represent? What do they talk about? What's their life perspective about? What's their past behavior about? What might that be about? Do you really want to participate in that? So a very important skill to work on developing is your discernment. I think the healthiest form of discernment is a combination of critical thinking and intuition. It's not one or the other, it's both. You don't want to get trapped and locked in either side because then you're missing the other side. So we need to use both hemispheres of the brain. This is a skill. It's something you develop. You were born with it. Usually that gets programmed out of you. If you were really, really lucky and you grew up with really conscious, responsible, supportive parents, maybe you don't have this problem. But for most of us, we do. So we have to work on developing this discernment. So the two most important things that are gonna save you from people harvesting your energy is respond instead of reacting and using discernment, which is both critical thinking and intuition. So hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, give it a like or let me know in the comments below. If there's something that you want to share about experiences that you've had with a narcissist or other manipulator who was harvesting your energy or harvesting the energy of someone that you observed, I would love to see that in the comments below. That can definitely help someone else to understand all of the many ways that this can show up in human interactions. I'm sending you all a big hug.